Question 1. The Year 11 class of 32 pupils sat a mock test to prepare for their exams. Their results are shown in the chart below. How many students did not achieve grade A? If we want the students that did not achieve grade A, we could first work out the students that did and then take that away from the total. The students that achieved grade A was here, 12.5%, so we need to find 12.5% of 32. In order to do that, we can do 0.125 multiplied by 32, which is 4. This is the number of pupils that got a grade A, so we want the pupils that didn't. We'll take 4 away from the total, which is 28 students who did not achieve grade A. Question 2. A year 11 class of 32 pupils sat a mock test to prepare for their exams. Their results are shown in the chart below. Which of the following statements are true? Let's look at A first. 62.5% of pupils achieved either grade A or B. To find out that, we need to add up the percentage that achieved grade A, which is 12.5%, and the percentage that achieved grade B, that's 50%, which equals 62.5%. So that one is true. B, less than a third of pupils achieved grade C. Grade C is 25% which we know as a fraction is 1 over 4. We could also have found that by saying 25 over 100 and then simplifying it to 1 over 4. 1 over 4 is the same as 0 0.25 and we need to compare that to a third which is 0 0.33. 0 0.25 is less than a third so this is true. Now for C, exactly 82.5% did not achieve grade D. We need to take those that achieved grade D, that's 12.5%, and take that away from the total, 100%. So 100% minus 12.5% will give us those that did not achieve grade D. And that's 87.5%, which is not 82.5%, so that's false. Finally, we have true, true, and false. Question 3. A year 11 class of 32 pupils sat a mock test to prepare for their exams. Their results are shown in the chart below. How many more pupils achieved grade B than grade C and D? Okay, to calculate grade B, we need 50% of the total 32. That's simply a half of 32, which is 16. Next for grade C and D, grade C is 25% and grade D is 12.5%, which in total is 37.5%. We need to calculate 37.5% of 32. There's a few ways to do this. We can use this with fractions. We know that 12.5% is 1 8th. This is 3 times that, so that's 3 8 3 8 of 32 is the same as multiplying. And 1 8 of 32 is 4, so 3 eighths must be 12. Finally, we just need the difference between these two values. 16 minus 2 is 4 more pupils. Question 4. 120 Year 7 students were polled on how they liked to travel to school in the summer and winter. The pie chart below compares the total for each mode of transport in both seasons. Which modes of transport saw an increase in usage from summer to winter? Okay. For this one, we haven't been given any numbers about the sizes of these parts of the pie chart, so we need to estimate based on what we know. For example, this one, winter here, is clearly a half of the chart. In a similar way, we can see that this takes up a whole third of the chart. Between the blue and the red regions, a half is contained, and a sixth plus a third is a half. Similarly here, if we look at what a quarter would be, the green slice is clearly a half of a quarter, which would be one eighth, leaving three eighths to make up the other half. Additionally, on this side, we have a quarter in the blue region, and this green slice is the same as the segment over here, one sixth. The last thing we have is this leftover slice here, which will be one twelfth. We can find that by comparing it to a sixth, it's a half of a sixth. 
Now we just need to see which modes of transport increase in usage from summer to winter. So walking went from a sixth to a twelfth, that's a decrease. A bus went from a third to a quarter, that's a decrease. Cycling went from an eighth to a sixth, which is an increase. And going by car went from three eighths to a half, which is an increase. So our answer is both C, cycling, and D, by car. Question five. 120 year seven students were polled on how they like to travel to school in the summer and winter. The pie chart below compares the total for each mode of transport in both seasons. What was the difference in the number of students arriving to school by car between summer and winter? So the students arriving by car is the yellow segment here. In winter, we can clearly see that that's one half. And in the summer, it's a bit more complicated here. First, this is a half. So this must be one eighth. Since it's a half of a half, which would be a quarter there, and a half of a quarter, which is one eighth. That means that left over here is three eighths. Let's figure out how many students that this represents. That's three eighths of 120 students. And as a calculation, that's three eighths times 120. To calculate that without a calculator, 120 divided by 8 is 15, so 3 times 15 is 45. Let's do the same for winter. A half of 120 is a half times 120, which is 60. The question asks what was the difference in the number of school in the number of students? That's 60, take away 45, which gives us an answer of 15 students. Question 6. 120 Year 7 students were polled on how they like to travel to school in the summer and winter. The pie chart below compares the total for each mode of transport in both seasons. How many students arrived by bus or bicycle in winter? So we're looking at these two regions here, and we need to know the total slice that both of these occupy. Clearly this is a quarter, as it has a 90 degree angle, and we need to know how much the cycle one takes up. Compared to this one, the bus, which is a third, we can see that the cycle is a sixth. Another way to look at that is, in the summer, we have a half occupied by two slices, one which is clearly twice as big as the other. So that would be one sixth and two sixths. And two sixths is a third. Okay, so we need to combine these two fractions. A quarter plus a sixth. To combine fractions, it's easy to make them over the same denominator. So we'll use the denominator 24. 6 over 24 is the same as a quarter. And 4 over 24 is the same as a sixth, which gives 10 over 24. Or if we're simplifying, 5 over 12. Now let's find 5 twelfths of the number of students. 5 twelfths of 120 is 50 pupils. Question 7. A PE teacher records 240 pupils times in a race on a school sports day. The proportion of pupils that achieved each time is displayed in the chart below. How many pupils took 2 to 3 minutes to complete the race? So we're looking at this segment of the pie here, the yellow one, and that's 90 degrees. We know 90 degrees is a quarter of the total circle. We can check that if we want by doing 360 times a quarter, which is 90. If it's a quarter of the total circle, it's also a quarter of the total number of pupils. So a quarter of 240, which is 60 pupils. That took two to three minutes to complete the race. Question eight. A PE teacher records 240 pupils times in a race on a school sports day. The proportion of pupils that achieved each time is displayed in the chart below. How many pupils took more than four minutes to complete the race? We're looking for regions that represent more than four minutes. That's these two, so that's these two regions here. One is 90 degrees, which we know is a quarter of the circle, and the other is 36 degrees, which we know is a tenth of the circle, since 360 over 36 is 10. We need to find out a quarter of the 240 pupils. They're all the pupils that took over five minutes and a tenth of 240. That's all the pupils that took four to five minutes. 
So a quarter of 240, that's 60 pupils, and a tenth of 240 is 24. Finally, we just need to add these two together, which gives us 84 pupils that took more than four minutes to complete the race. Question nine. A PE teacher records 240 pupils' times in a race on a school sports day. The proportion of pupils that achieved each time is displayed in the chart below. What was the difference between the number of students taking over five minutes and the number of students taking between three and four minutes? Over five minutes is this segment here, and between three and four minutes is the green segment here. We could work out what this represented, and this re represented in the, in the terms of the number of pupils, but what we can do is we can find the difference between the angle first, which is 18 degrees, and then work out what that is as a percentage of the entire circle, and work out the number of pupils from there. So, to work out what this is as a fraction of the entire circle, consider an angle we do know. 36 degrees we know is equivalent to a tenth of the circle, because 360 degrees is the whole circle. 18 degrees is half of 36, so 18 degrees must be equivalent to half of a tenth, which is 1 over 20. Let's find that fraction of the total number of pupils. 1 over 20 times 240, that's 12 pupils. Question 10. A PE teacher records 240 pupils times in a race on a school sports day. The proportion of pupils that achieved each time is displayed in the chart below. Which of the below statements are true? A. The least common completion time was between 3 and 4 minutes. The least common completion time on a pie chart would be the smallest slice, which is this one here, 4 to 5 minutes. So that's false. B. Over half of the students took longer than 3 minutes to finish the race. So those that took longer than three minutes are the red, blue, and green segments, these three here. If half of them took that amount of time, we would expect the green segment to finish here. However, it does not. It's actually over that. So that means over half of them took longer. So true. For C, more than one third of the students finished the race in under three minutes. So those that finish the race under th three minutes is this 72 and 90 degrees here, which is 162 degrees total. One third of the entire circle would be a third times 360, so that would occupy 120 degrees. However, these two in total occupy 162 degrees, which is more than one third. So that's true. Finally, our answer will be false, true, and true.